Last year, CNN President Jeff Zucker gave an interview to a publication, Variety, for a puff piece literally entitled, How Jeff Zucker Made CNN Great Again. Pretty hard-hitting story. In the piece, Zucker explained his formula for greatness. Hard news, hard news, and yet more hard news. Quote, he said, I think our air, as opposed to others, is truly fair and balanced. Zucker said that, apparently without snickering. Which raises the question, how much CNN does Jeff Zucker actually watch? Has he seen Jim Acosta lately? Acosta is CNN's senior White House correspondent. That's a title that suggests journalism rather than uninformed commentary. And yet here's Acosta from just two days ago unloading what is clearly a pre-rehearsed little editorial on CNN's air. Watch. I think President Trump, Brooke, uh, now has the world record for injecting politics uh, into the aftermath of a terror attack. Uh, that is exactly what has happened in the last uh, 12 hours or so, as the president has been tweeting about this. This president won a world record for injecting politics? According to Jim Acosta, reporter, that's, quote, exactly what happened. Hmm. Can we get some documentation for that claim? A certificate from the Guinness Book, maybe? Did CNN's most visible hard journalist just accidentally slip into third-rate punditry? Looks that way, and it probably wasn't by accident, actually. As a veteran Acosta watcher, we've noticed a theme here. Here's a greatest hits reel. I think we saw the president's true colors today, and, and I'm not sure they were red, white, and blue. He is ushering in a Cold War, a return to the Cold War between Washington and Havana. They were not, not just seeing a press conference go off the rails or, or jump the tracks. You were watching a presidency go off the rails and jump the tracks. At times, this White House has an unhealthy fixation on what I call the three M's, the Mexicans, the Muslims, and the media. You count the cliches in all those statements. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot more of that, but you get the point. Keep in mind that as of this morning, Jim Acosta was still listed as CNN's senior White House correspondent. Now, that's a different job from being a talking head on one of those panel shows with 19 guests, all of them minor political consultants. At least it's supposed to be a different job. Is Jeff Zucker watching any of this? Joe Concha writes about the media for The Hill. He watches all of it, and he joins us tonight. Look, Joe, I'm not attacking Jim Acosta for bad punditry at all, though obviously that's bad punditry. But just for, I'm kind of wondering what the boundaries are. I mean, if you're a White House correspondent, supposedly committing journalism, gathering facts, bringing them to your audience, how can that person coexist with the person we just saw? It cannot, Tucker. I mean, as far as reporters are concerned, you could say that Jim Acosta is the face of the anti-Trump movement. And that's fine if he's an activist or even an opinion right. host like yourself. The problem is, as you've noted, he is a senior White House correspondent for one of the largest news organizations in the world and what that does to CNN by extension, fairly or not, because there's plenty of good reporters over there, it gets labeled as not an objective news network that leads with facts first, but as the opposition party. And if you talk to folks within the administration, and I have, and you ask them, are Jim Acosta's day-to-day -day antics in terms of making himself the story, is that good or bad for you? And they enthusiastically say yes, because he is making our argument for us that not only is the media as a whole, because now they could use a broad brush, negative towards us, but they treat us with hostility. And they're actually, during these press briefings, taking a side on a position and openly debating us on it. That's not what White House senior correspondents do. Well, it's, and, yeah, go it's ahead. not. It's not. And, you know, for all the grief that Fox takes, mostly because it shows like this, that I'm jumping around, getting my face, your face, in my opinion, I and mean, I get that's fine. Our guys at the White House don't behave like that. I mean, they're not running around giving little editorials about things. They never have been like that. Does no one else notice that this is happening at CNN? And by the way, I should just say, you're right. There are some really good people at CNN. I know them. I used to work there. And there's, there still are. But Jim Acosta seems to discredit them. And you're saying, is anybody noticing it? Well, of yeah. course they are. I mean, he's, he's one of the most visible people on the network. A lot of people watch the press briefings. It beats some soap operas on major news networks. That, that's a true fact. Let me read you. Uh, <laughs> there was a profile on Acosta uh, in Politico at the end of September. And this is how the last paragraph reads. Acosta took a last sip of his beer, content that, and I'm going to accentuate the words here that tell you everything wrong about the way he's going about his job, content that he was on the right side of history, quoting Acosta, people are going to look back at this moment and ask each and every one of us, what did you do when Trump was doing this to America? What role did you play? 
Now that's taking a side and saying that my ideas are better than your ideas and my worldview is more righteous than well, yours. He, he sounds like Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Was he a theologian or something? I don't know who I that is. I thought he was a, you know, a, a German theologian who was murdered for his beliefs by the oh. Nazis. I mean, the point is he, he makes it sound like he believes he, he has a moral mission when I thought he was supposed to be a reporter. Yeah, and, and the problem is that it's not just Jim Acosta, uh, but other pundits at that network. Uh, the CNN political analyst, Brian Fallon, he was the national press secretary for Hillary Clinton. I asked your producers to put together this tweet, uh, to put it on the screen, because it really just shows you what an analyst, a political analyst, should not be doing. He says, that's a live look at Ed Gillespie campaign strategy meeting. He tweeted this out last week. Ed Gillespie is running for Virginia governor as a Republican. He came out against Charlottesville and that violence, and that horrible day that happened there wow. more than anybody. And you have an analyst doing that. Or you have April Ryan, who is a White House reporter for American Radio Urban Networks, but also was a CNN contributor and is on that air quite often. And she asked the press secretary just two days ago, do you think that the administration thinks that slavery is wrong in the U.S.? You don't ask a question like that, Tucker, if you want a meaningful answer. You ask a question like that no. to make yourself the story and get retweeted and go viral. I love how they're attacking Ed Gillespie as some kind of extremist. I mean, he's so moderate. Yeah. I mean, from my perspective, anyway, someone told me the other day that Keith Oberman isn't well. Have you heard that? Uh, Keith Oberman, since the theme tonight is making yourself the story, obviously he likes to say things that are provocative and over the top. That is not what's surprising. But on The View, and I don't know if you have this soundbite, but on The View, oh, you do, okay, uh, if we, we could play that real quick. You said recently uh, via tweet that Trump and his family have done more damage to America than bin Laden and ISIS combined. Yes. <laughs> do you believe that? Yeah, we're, we're, we did really well after 9-11. I don't think we, the country has given itself enough oh. credit for what we did not do after 9-11. We, we did not restrict all of the freedoms in this country. We did not single out people. Is, is he okay? I mean, are other people concerned about him? Uh, well, I would imagine so. What I'm concerned more about, Tucker, did you hear the reaction of that audience yeah, who cheered when, com when a, a guest compares a sitting U.S. president to the guy who carried out 9-11 in bin Laden that killed more than 3,000 people in New York, Pennsylvania, and uh, New York, uh, and, and Washington, obviously, and then yeah. also says that President Trump is worse than ISIS, who just took credit for carrying out an attack just a couple of blocks from here that killed eight people. And the crowd cheers that. And no co-host outside of Meghan McCain, who used to be with this network, actually stood up to him and said, that is ridiculous. It doesn't inspire We've lost confidence. our mind. This makes you hurt your hair. Makes me a little nervous. Joe Concha, as always, thank you. Thanks, Tucker.